So the Nikon Z9 has been out for a while, but recently we got the Nikon Z8. They're both cameras built around the same sort of specs with 45 megapixels, 20 frames per second, excellent autofocus. But which one should you pick for your own wildlife photography? Let's get into it. Hey, how's it going guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video. And today I wanna to talk to you about the Z9, the Z8, and a few little differences between these two cameras that might make one of them a little bit better for your own wildlife photography. If you're new to the channel, uh, my name's Tom, I'm a professional wildlife photographer from the UK, and here I give like behind the scenes tips, takes you on location, shooting wildlife photography, and also talking about the gear that helps us out in the field. Now, recently in the Nikon range, we've been so treated to the cameras that we've got. Having had a Z9 for years, it's just an incredible tool for wildlife photography out in the field. And now with the release of the Z8, we've got a mini little brother to the Z9 that offers many of the same features, yet in a smaller and lighter package that's also saves you a little bit of cash. But I wanna to talk today about the differences between these two models, even though they are so similar, and why you might wanna pick one over the other. So I've been using the Z9 ever since it came out, and it is an incredible camera for making images out in the field. It works great, it's rugged, it is built so strongly. It is just the sort of camera that you pick up and you love it in the hand. If you're used to the larger pro DSLRs, you know, if you've had a D4, D5, D6, those sort of cameras, you're gonna grab this and you're just gonna feel at home. It's got all the button placements that we would be used to as a Nikon shooter, and it just feels superb for working and making images in the field. Yes, it's a bit of a, a hunk and a bit of a chunk, but to be fair, that's what you want from this style of camera. It's meant to be rugged, it's meant to be built strong, it's meant to deal with the worst conditions that the world can throw at it and still nail those pictures, and that is what the Z9 does. I've used it out in the Arctic, I've used it in the UK, I've used it all over the place, and I know I can rely on it out in the field, and that's essential when it's your job. Now, the Z8 is a slimmed down version of the Z9. You've got still the same megapixels, the same uh, autofocus, the same frames per second, all of that stuff, but just in a body that is smaller and lighter. Kind of harks back to the old D3, D700 days. Yet still nowadays we've got max on the technology and what we're achieving with the cameras it's still a professional body. Um, yes, it's not as weather sealed as the Z9, but it's still gonna put up with pretty much anything you can throw at it. You've got the weather sealing and all the grips and buttons and all the stuff that you would expect from a pro camera, but it's just not as solid. You know, when you pick the Z9 up, you can feel the difference. The carbon fiber build of this, yes, you know, it makes it lighter, easier to carry out in the field. But yeah, there certainly is a slight difference there that is notable um, if you're going to be using it every single day. However, of course, the benefits of it being smaller and lighter means that for certain scenarios, this camera does trump the Z9 for certain things. And these are the sort of things that I wanted to talk about. Let's just go through the, the kind of major differences between these two cameras. If you don't know the specs of these cameras, you can go look them up. You know, there's loads of videos on that sort of stuff. I'm really talking about the primary differences. I look at these two cameras as a professional wildlife photographer and why I have one of each and not two of one. Now, firstly, let's just go around the camera. You know, the button placement, everything like that is, is roughly the same on both. So if you're used to one, you've used the other. You do miss a few buttons, of course, because this is a smaller camera. Don't have that third FN button down the, down the bottom here. You know, on the back, there's less buttons. And of course, the major difference here is the portrait grip. Now this gives you that second shooting option when you're taking portrait pictures and it's extremely comfortable in the hand. I love the fact that the Z9 is basically a square. It means that it rotates around the middle point so when you turn it the position is absolutely perfect for that portrait grip. Now I know that you can buy a portrait grip for the Z8. I tried it out, I used it and to be fair I don't really like it. I think I will never ever put a grip on my Z8. There's a few reasons for it, but in terms of just it feels in the hand, it makes the camera quite a bit taller, like about there, rather than the nice square form of the Z9. And it doesn't have that just solidness that the Z9 does with the grip on it. And so as my first kind of mix between the two, I would definitely go for the Z9 if I was thinking I was gonna be putting a portrait grip on it. And as a wildlife photographer, why is that so important? Well, it's all about balance and size. Having a small camera on the back of a large telephoto lens, like oh, my 600 F4, is really important. If I put a smaller camera on the back, you know, some of the 
the silly mirrorless camera I've seen in the past. This Z9 just balances so nice on the camera, makes it so much easier to actually handle and use in the field. I think some people think that you know, by adding a lighter camera to the back, you make it easier to handhold, but it's just completely not the case. The weight of the camera and the lens balancing together makes it a far nicer experience to use than with a smaller camera. Now, of course, yes, you can put the grip on the back of the ZA, but I do think in terms of the ergonomics, the feel, everything like that, the Z9 is what I'm going after when I'm using these ultra long telephoto lenses. And I'm talking the large primes, you know, the 600 f4, 400 2a, 800 pf, those really much larger lenses where balance is really key. Now, of course, with the added grip, you do also get the benefit of the fact that you get a much bigger battery. The battery on the Z8 is a lot smaller than the Z9. And, you know, it is something that is noticeable when you're out in the field for a full day. With a Z9 battery, same with like a D5, D4, um, you, you know that you can just last for so long on these things. Out in the Arctic, you know, we were shooting four days without having to recharge. And that's something that I've just, you know, come accustomed to with these style of cameras. The smaller batteries that the Z8 uses, you, you'll need a couple, really, to get through quite a big shoot of a day. And if you're shooting video, you're going to need even more. One thing that, of course, is a benefit of the Z8 versus the Z9 is that if you're moving up to this from a D850, Z6, Z62, Z7, Z72, you probably already have a load of this style of battery. That means that you can use them in the Z8 and you'll be able to kind of overcome that issue of uh, running out of power because you'll have loads of batteries already. So that's certainly something to think about if you're moving up. Of course, that larger battery does make this camera a bit heavier. The Z8 is obviously significantly lighter than the Z9. That certainly makes it nicer just throwing the bag like every single day but of course when you're balancing with long lenses I'm not worried about that it's more the feel of the camera and how I'm working with it that actually makes the big difference now the second difference that I will point out in the two cameras is around the uh, card slot now you've got slightly different card arrangements on both these cameras firstly you'll notice that the Z9 has a lock on it now it can be a little bit finickety to get it open sometimes but you know it works fine but it keeps those cards very very well protected you can never accidentally open that card door and meaning you open the camera up for moisture ingress or anything like that in the field the z8 one doesn't have a lock you just pull it back and open it and that means that you might sometimes knock it open but i do like the fact that nikon have changed slightly the way that the uh, grip protrudes on the side, on my Z6 it sticks out a bit more, so you actually do knock it more, but with the Z8 they've put that back in, so actually you're, you're probably not going to open that. But yeah, it opens up fairly easy, and it's still a weatherproof door and everything like that, it just doesn't lock. Now with the Z8 you get one CF Express um, card, that fantastic media, super fast, really um, you know great cards, for, especially now we have the high data rate of these cameras. But the second slot is for an SD. Now, that is handy if you have, you know, legacy media, you've got SDs for loads of other cameras, you know, you can use them straight away. But for me nowadays, because obviously I have a lot of CF Express cards, I do like the fact that the Z9 has two. It means that, you know, if you want to run it as a backup, if you want to use it, one for video, one for steals, you're getting the absolute best performance you can right into those cards, whereas the SDs are obviously a little bit slower. Not too much of a problem if you're just shooting stills primarily to the um, CF Express, but yeah, certainly something to think about and a reason that I do really like the Z9's arrangement there. So right, let's talk about the benefits of the Z8 over the Z9 then. Firstly is the price, obviously, at £1,500 cheaper, you're getting loads of the specs of the Z9, but you're saving yourself a lot of money. That is extremely handy if you are upgrading into the system. You know, if you're coming to this thinking, oh, this is gonna be my wildlife camera, but I also haven't got a Z-mount telephoto yet, certainly consider that, because I think the 1,500 pound difference should be placed into a lens if you don't already have one. Now, the other benefits of the Z8, of course, is it's significantly smaller and lighter. If you like, hiking, walking, and you do a mixture of photography, not just long lens work with wildlife photography, then the Z8 is a really compelling option. You know, if you could pair it up with like the 400 f4 or the 180 to 600, it's still gonna balance fine without the portrait grip. It's gonna feel really nice in the hand, but it's gonna be significantly lighter to carry around all the time. If you like to mix it up and do macro work, wide angles, you know, landscape work, 
having a smaller and lighter camera, you're just gonna enjoy taking it out a lot of the time more. It fits into smaller camera bags, that is a benefit. If you travel a lot and you're gonna be going on planes and airplanes, having that smaller size is really, really useful. And of course, cutting down the weight is really nice. Now, this is kind of one of my key reasons of why I have a Z8 and a Z9 and not both of Z9s is because, you know, as a photographer, I do travel um, with my work. It does mean that I'm carrying a significant amount of kit. And by saving a little bit of weight and space in my bag, yet still having basically the same performance, is a really big benefit to me. And for pros who already have a Z9 and are looking for a backup camera, the Z8 makes an incredible option for that because you save the money, you save the weight, you save the size, and you still have a camera that can do pretty much all of the job of your Z9 can do um, that is just such a major benefit for someone like me. The smaller size makes it um, you know, very useful as a, as a second shooting camera. Now, of course, the size also has some other benefits that you might not think about. And it's actually due to the distance that they sit above the ground. When I'm out shooting, I love getting really close to the ground for those really nice out of focus foregrounds and backgrounds. The lower I can get, the better. And sometimes when I'm using the Z9, I'm like, oh, I wish I could just get, you know, that little, that little, that little bit lower. And with a Z8, well, I can do that. I can get about, you know, that much lower. That actually does make quite a big difference when you're shooting out in the field especially if you're doing stuff like macro work or anything like that, but again, you wanna be as low as possible, then the Z8 is an extremely compelling camera to use because it does add to that versatility and certainly worth thinking about. Another reason I picked a Z8 up as my second camera rather than a second Z9 for that benefit. You know, I used to love my D850 to take off the grip and be a bit lower. Um, and so now I've got the option with these cameras that is absolutely wicked. Of course, the other benefit of it being smaller and lighter is it actually just blends in a bit nicer when you're out in the field. Sometimes you're in locations where I don't wanna stand out as much as a professional photographer. Maybe I'm shooting street pictures of you know animals and stuff like that. And you just don't wanna be really obvious with that huge, massive camera like the Z9. Well, the Z8 is just a little bit smaller and it looks just more of a normal size that people are used to. It doesn't command the attention of the Z9. Something that I do actually think about when I'm out shooting, um, especially in more urban locations. And of course, you know, those all combine together with a lighter weight, smaller size, being able to get lower. It is really compelling for me to have this camera alongside the Z9. So then let's draw a few conclusions from this for people you know, investing in and buying one of these cameras. If you are going to use it with ultra long telephoto lenses like a 600 f4, 400 2A, anything really big and sizable where the balance is key, I would be going for a Z9. Of course, if you're already investing that sort of price into those lenses, you know that the tools should be working together at the best possible level, and the Z9 is gonna be the camera for that. If you are a photographer who loves a portrait grip, and I mean, you really just like shooting that way, you often find yourself flipping the camera over, and you definitely would put a grip on a Z8, well, I would really think about jumping up to the Z9 because I genuinely think long term you're going to enjoy it so much more. The ergonomics, the build, everything about it is just nicer to use the Z9 every day, especially in the portrait orientation. And of course, if you work in environments where having a camera that has to put up with anything, and I mean anything you can throw at it, again, I'd be going for the Z9. Now, if you are a photographer who is you know really wanting to up their wildlife photography wants all the specs but you know the price is a factor of course the ZA is going to be your choice without thinking about it twice you get pretty much everything you want from the Z9 smaller and lighter body and a lower price point brilliant just yeah buy one you'll love it if you want a lighter camera to do a mixture of photography um you know landscape you know macro whatever again the Z8 if getting low is really key then the Z8 is really great as well. And of course, if you are thinking that saving the money on this to spend on lenses is gonna be a benefit, again, I would go with the Z8 for sure. If you're a photographer who has a Z9 already and is looking for a backup camera, then the Z8 is, is just a no-brainer. I think having two Z9s, for those photographers who work in the worst of worst locations, yes. But if you wanna save a bit of weight, have a smaller bag size, 
and you just want that extra camera just as a backup or to be using on a second lens, I think the Z8 is a very compelling camera to use um, and is the reason, well, I've got one in my bag. So there you go. So there's a few thoughts on the Z9 and the Z8 for wildlife photography and which one you should pick. If you've got any other questions about them, you want to know a bit more, drop them down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to get back to you. Of course, if you've hung around this long, I hope you enjoy the videos. Please subscribe for future content. I do loads of behind the scenes from out in the field photographing wildlife, so you'll definitely pick pick up some tips and of course give this uh, video a like it really helps the channel reach more people and grow um, and just means I can get out and produce more content that's really good fun but of course until the next one guys get out there enjoy your wildlife photography and I'll see you soon